Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone's having a great day. Uh, my name is Daniel Crane. I'm the Programming and Community Engagement Manager at the Center for Creative Entrepreneurship. And today is our Thursday Spotlight. Every Thursday, we talk to organizations, entrepreneurs, small businesses, learn about what they're doing, uh, some of the tips that they have for entrepreneurs, and some of the resources uh, for our community. If you want to learn more information about our organization, go to cceglobal.org and you can check out uh, the events that we have um, happening every week. Every week, you know, there's lots of webinars, um, boot camps, obviously we're all virtual right now, um, that you can go and attend to for free. Right now, I would like to do a big shout out to Amplify Music. Uh, Amplify Music is having their festival. This is the second day. So if you go to amplifymusic.org, um, you can check that out. While we're waiting for our guests to, uh, to join the conversation, we're very excited about having um, Angie uh, Gaffney come and be a part of, uh, of this conversation. I think I just see her now. Um, so let's bring her in. All right. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm well. How are you? Very good. Thank you for uh, taking the time to uh, talk to us today. I'm so glad um, to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So, Angie, you know, you have quite a, a, a resume and lots of things that you do. It was uh, a lot of fun kind of reading about all of your work. Um, you know, you're uh, a film producer, uh, a life coach, and you're the executive uh, director for the Independent Film Alliance uh, for Chicago. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, your own journey, uh, you know, as a, as a film producer and as a creative and kind of how it led you to, you know, kind of what your current work is right now? Yeah. Um, well, I've been a storyteller, uh, from a very young age. It's kind of my spirituality through storytelling. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I actually got started in the creative industries in Chicago because, I was uh, doing haunted houses. I was producing haunted houses. So just I have kind of friends. Like I have friends that did the same thing. How they got <laughs> yeah. into it. it was like a side gig for a lot of theater people. I know. So. Yeah, totally. <laughs> kind of a weird offshoot. Um, right. And uh, I fell in love with film producing or filmmaking in school uh, at DePaul University, and I. I didn't really initially identify that I wanted to be a producer. I mm -hmm. just, I really liked the, the building of the thing. Like I see film producing is very entrepreneurial. You right. have a concept, you're raising money, you manufacture a product, which happens to be a movie. Like it's a very mm -hmm. entrepreneur, serial entrepreneurial system. So I, I kind of fell in love with the building of it and the production of it. So I started a lot on set um as like a first ad and like crew positions mm -hmm. uh kind of worked my and kept working my way up um and eventually i got I'll, i got tired of like running the set all the time and i was like what i really love about this is the entrepreneurial nature and i really love supporting directors or creatives manifest their vision right um so it was, uh, so I was kind of looking at how else, where else in the world can I apply those same skill sets, like helping creatives realize what they want and supporting them. And that's kind mm -hmm. of when the life coaching came in as a nice, a nice balance to the film producing. Um, yeah. And then independent film Alliance is my entrepreneurial muscle. Flexing. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, it's, in it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, if you could talk a little bit, you know, uh, uh, more about that, you know, I think it's it's really um, interesting. And here at CCE, you know, as a new organization, we're really, um, you know, working on on that community, that community building that you're that, that you do at IFA, but also, you know, um, the resources, right? And and yeah. and kind of being able to identify where the gaps are. What are people really looking for? You know, you don't want to give people what you think they want, but what they actually really need, and identifying mm -hmm. that and I'm just kind of reading about IFA and, and watching some of the videos. It, it seems like it's a very special community um, that, that, you know, works together. And everyone kind of talked about what they really liked uh, about IFA was just having peers to kind of bounce ideas off of. 
-hmm. and having kind of a, a, a really established network. So can you talk a little bit about that and, 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 and how you built that and, and, and what that means to you? Yeah, so um, uh, Independent Film Alliance or IFA is also kind of a, a new organization. We, we actually relaunched uh, in February of last year Perfect timing. Um, right. <laughs> we, uh, that's when we started. <laughs> I know. So. Perfect timing. Uh, and we, it was actually, we, IFA formed as the result of a merger between two film organizations right. in Chicago, um, Stage 18 and IFP. So previously, I founded Stage 18, which was kind of an event office space community incubator at Cinespace, similar very much to um, 2112, just in a different location in the city. Um, right. And I founded that, uh, honestly, because I was really lonely as a film producer. Like I was, mm. filmmakers uh, and film producing can be highly competitive for resources, especially money, and can be really siloed. Uh, and I didn't want to work out of my guest bedroom. <laughs> it's like, where can I go to work <laughs> to like hang out with other filmmakers? Um, and so Stage 18 was founded <laughs> uh, as a result of me looking at like an, an incredible partnership with Cinespace. They've been wonderful mm -hmm. um, in that. So me looking at, hey, what is the community I feel like I need and like where did it go or how can I build mm -hmm. it? Um, mm -hmm. And then that continued to kind of grow organically, especially as Cinespace grew you know, the interest in being kind of physically on the lot and proximity to what was happening uh, grew. And then when uh, uh, IFP, when it, Stage 18 and IFP started talking about merging, we were serving a really similar audience. Um, the barrier to entry was pretty high with Stage 18 because you were paying rent for office space. And IFP, right. it was pretty low. And we started collaborating on all these events and we're like, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> this does not make sense to be these two separate organizations. So um, we merged and I think, you know, the, the influx of energy that we're seeing at IFA and the community that we've started to build um, is a direct result of that, of like disparate organizations coming together uh, to combine resources to better serve the independent filmmaking community. Um, and it's a lot of happy, I mean, well, a lot of happy hours. Everyone's so Zoomed out these days, so we, <laughs> we don't have many happy hours over Zoom, but um, we had a lot of physical events uh, right, when, we right. were, when we were in person, and um, we still have a lot of virtual, like creative virtual ways to hang out. So we're looking forward to get back together. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, so, you know, I come from a, a musical background and I really understand the um, music industry in, in Chicago. Um, and, and from what I understand of the film industry is that it's actually growing a lot because of Cinespace, mm -hmm. that, you know, you're seeing more um, independent filmmakers come out of Chicago, maybe even stay here. I think, you know, I assume that a lot of people do leave um, if they are starting to get success to, you know, L.A. Um, or New York. Um, what, uh, you know... What, what do you think is important for people who want to start producing films or, or creating films, um, you know, when they're starting out or even if they're mid career, they're in Chicago, like what are some of the things that you have seen that have worked for people um, as they're building their career in film? Um, yeah, we're, we're working really hard to make independent filmmaking specifically sustainable in Chicago. Um, right. Cause it's, it's challenging now, but I think that the, uh, the things that have worked is I think folks making making their own content like Chicago in the film industry specifically is a very entrepreneurial town. If you mm -hmm. want to like shop, a, write a script and shop a script around Los Angeles or the managers or whatever, you're not going to have that immediate access here. But what Chicago does have is the community and affordable resources for you to actually make content that then attracts the attention of agents or managers or production companies or whatever it is. Um, I also think that I also, I guess two other things. I also tell folks that um, uh, like 
as a filmmaker, everyone always has this thing where they want to leave their day job. Like, mm. it's like this dream, this perceived <laughs> like dream to like leave my right. day job and be a filmmaker. Yeah. And I actually in Chicago, Lost audio. Oh, there we go. Can you hear me? Hello? What happened there? I lost you for a second. So, uh, someone tried to call me, so that's probably what happened. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, uh, like, don't quit your day job. I, I mm -hmm. don't know. I think, I think, um, People leave the industry too, too too soon because they put the burden of making all of their money on their art too soon in their career. Right. So I always tell folks, just get a more flexible day job. When I was starting right. out, I would work. I was a barista. I was a babysitter. I would yeah. paint walls. Anything that was enough to keep the lights on that didn't like mentally and emotionally totally drain me. So after my job, I had plenty of energy to put towards my own content. Yeah, I think that's a that's a really good point. Um, you know, I was a total 100% musician for 15 years, and I played every gig ever and toured and, um, you know, taught at many different schools, did private lessons. Uh, but I did a lot of things I didn't want to do because I had to just, you know, gigs I, did, I didn't want to play, but I needed to make money. Um, and transitioning into uh, some more like stable jobs, it's kind of helped me zero in on what I love about music mm -hmm. um, and, and really put my energy towards that. So I think that, you know, uh, and, and I've heard that advice from other people as well. It's like, yo, keep that day job, like, you know, and, and zero in on the thing that you really want to do. Um, because that's what, I mean, what ended up happening to me was I had to just play a bunch of things I didn't want to play. I don't want to play Sweet Caroline anymore. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm, totally. I'm over it. <laughs> You're over that. <laughs> you have much more original music to put out there. <laughs> I, am, I am an artist. Okay, no. Um, but, <laughs> but um, and, you know, so in terms of independent films, um, you know, when people are looking for, like developing a budget and how to find funding for that. Mm -hmm. um, what are your suggestions uh, for, you know, because that, that seems to be everyone's kind of question. It's like, I had this great idea. Maybe I build out a cool pitch deck of like shooting a pilot or shooting a small film, but I need to find, you know, X, X funds to kind of produce this thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how, how does IFA help with that? What would be your suggestions for people who are, you know, looking to raise some money? Yeah. Well, I have a whole soapbox on this topic. We don't have time for it all, but I'll try to, <laughs> I'll try to give you some snippets. Um, uh, I think so at a high level, I think uh, film projects and television projects in Chicago are uh, underdeveloped and people jump to funding too quickly because that's what they mm. think they should do. Right. Um, sure. And the thing with funding is you really need to know the difference between are you asking for investment or are you asking for donations? Mm -hmm. If you're asking for investment, and folks just throw that word around sometimes, but investment means right. that you have like cast attached, you have distribution, folks are actually investing to make their money back. Like the business of it is really solid. Right. So if you don't have that, you're asking for donations. Um, to, to make your project. And I, uh, you know, I've raised a lot of money in both of those spheres. And there's no, I wish there was a, a quick fix or something. There's no easy way to do it. But it's right. always taken like two years and consistent outreach and communication. Right. So the money is there. You just have to build, the, spend enough time building the relationship in order for that trust to be established, for that investment to happen. So right. it's always like a friend of a friend of a cousin who comes in and really wants to be a part of the film industry or wants to make money in the film industry and says, hey, I want to do this thing. Um, so I, I, I think most folks can raise money but it's a long game and it takes a lot of outreach and a lot of conversations. Who do you know? 
How can, right. who do you know to do this, et cetera? Um, you know, if you are going more the investment route and you have a whole business plan and you have some name talent attached, there are a couple groups in town that do fund projects on a lower budget scale, Chicago Media Angels and Chicago Film Project. And then Chicago Media Project does docs. They all basically sound the same, but those are the three names. Um, <laughs> and uh, they will, they will like, invest or help raise money on projects that have a really truly viable business model right um well, i think that's i mean that's that's across the industry you know yeah. i mean if you you know you need to have everything really built out and and um people have to know exactly what they're giving money for and, and mm -hmm. how that looks mm -hmm. um can you and this will be kind of my last question uh you know okay so COVID happened we're on quarantine um, has there been any silver linings uh, for for you as you know a film producer or a life coach or even as the executive director of IFA? You've seen some things that are like, oh, you know, I feel like um, this opened up, you know, these possibilities for us, or I am more aware of, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I think on the IFA front, you know, launching a new org right before the pandemic, um, we were originally devastated, but it actually supported us because we were able to bring in higher profile guest speakers to right. yeah, connect with our community everybody. yeah mm -hmm. without traveling them right so kind of this right. new way to connect with um established producers and directors on the coast um and i you know i think it just uh it forced us to slow down a little bit um and do less better and what we were handling, which I think is, you know, now a motto of our organization and something we're working on incorporating as often as we can. Um, as a life coach, it's gone a couple ways. Like uh, uh, some, some people and some of my uh, coaching clients, um, you know, were hit really hard financially by the pandemic. So, you know, Coaching is kind of like an extra cost or a surplus thing. Right. It's not a necessity. But on the flip side of that, um, a lot of folks were uh, kind of got in touch with what they really wanted during the pandemic, had like a reckoning of how they're spending their time. And so they've come to, uh, hi, Sadia. They've gr come to coaching as a way to like help them build now what they want. Um, and then on the film producing side, I have two projects in distribution. So um, just the way my projects late lined up, like I don't, I haven't had anything in production in the past year, in the next year. So it's in that way, it's been fine. Um, right. And we've been really able to focus on getting uh, these two feature films out into the world, which will happen later this summer. That's exciting. Well. Uh, Angie, thanks for taking the time uh, to talk thanks to me Thanks so much today. for having me. You know, I look forward to, you know, meeting you in person. Uh, I, love, I would love point. that. <laughs> I would really love <laughs> and, that. Uh, <laughs> um, and even checking out the space and, you know, looking at all the programming that you're doing at IFA, it, you know, it's definitely something that we at CC want to be modeling after and, and the community that you're plan uh, putting together. Um, uh, it, looks, it, it looks wonderful and it's awesome. Sorry, you guys know each other, obviously. Yeah. Um, but uh, again, Thanks, thanks uh, for, for joining us. I hope everyone has uh, a wonderful rest of the week. Um, and we will join you, join us next Thursday for another Global uh, Industry Spotlight. Angie, have a wonderful weekend. Thanks, thanks so much. Yeah, with us. good to be with you. All right. Bye. Okay, take care.